Hi from Rochester, New York. It's the Anomaly Film Festival in the Little Theater. I'm Matt Nods, co-founder and host of uh, Anomaly Presents. Uh, we've got our friends uh, from an, uh, Extraordinary with us. We've got Mike Ahern, we've got uh, Enda Lohman, and we've got uh, Maeve Higgins with us. We're, we actually feel very lucky to have everybody with us here. Yeah. Uh, welcome to our live Q&A for the fantastic film Extraordinary. Uh, just a couple things here at the top. Uh, if you're with us live, uh, make sure you RSVP on the Facebook event. We've got some really great ghost stickers and glow-in-the-dark paintings from Eric Lehman from the 1975 gallery, uh, as well as an anomaly t-shirt to give away after the discussion. Um, and just uh, a couple quick things about Extraordinary. Um, we actually screened this during our festival in November. I, I don't know if you guys <laughs> knew that. Um, I knew that, yeah. Well, thanks, Maeve. Um, the cool thing about it is I tried that everything I could to stop it from happening, but <laughs> you got a hold of the copy. You got the tapes. We did. We, we found you a guy on the street. Legally. But, uh, <laughs> We're going to sue your ass anomaly. <laughs> well, I guess I won't tell you this next part then. Uh, you actually won the audience award for best feature. Yep. I take it all back. <laughs> <laughs> But and worst actor. <laughs> Everybody had such a great time in that theater watching it. Um, oh, and so cute. Everybody came out afterwards super excited about it. Um, and that's why we're so excited that it's available through this virtual theater uh, method with um, Kino Lorber and Cranked Up Films, uh, Kenny getting it out there for <coughs> art house theaters while they're closed and bringing us all a laugh when we need it. Right. Um, so we've actually got folks from all over the world joining us tonight. I know we've got not only our guests in, in, in London and in Ireland, um, but we've also got folks from Canada and all over the United States as well. So welcome. Um, be sure that if you have access to it, definitely screen, screen this movie on, uh, on one of the virtual theaters. Support your local art house theater and uh, I guess we'll get down to business. <laughs> um, so like I said, we the best part of screening Extraordinary at, at Anomaly this year was hearing the crowd's reaction. Uh, Mike and uh, Maeve, I know this is your first feature. How did it feel to kind of hear that audience response when you saw it in the theaters or just, you know, running into people and hearing them talk about your movie or, or things like that? Uh, surprising. <laughs> um, yeah. And very good. I mean, I think one of the things that we were surprised by was I mean obviously we had seen the movie countless times before it ever showed in any cinemas or before we had seen it with any crowds and we just thought we'll sit for the first 10 minutes and actually quite a lot of the times that we were going to film festivals <clears throat> we ended up staying just because we were enjoying the crowds reactions more than we thought I suppose that's kind of egotistical <laughs> but it is something that we did quite a lot we were like mm, we'll wallow in the <laughs> adulation no no we just we we just found it like it's such a different experience seeing a movie with in in the theater compared to you know sitting in the edit having watched it for the 40th time in a row but uh yeah we were really surprised and enjoyed that a lot yeah and, and i think a lot of the festivals are kind of genre e festivals as well so the crowds were you know really mentally really up to it up for it and really amazing and really good we had just so much fun at those um traveling around going to those you know um so and i think the first the first uh place it played was set by set west um and it had a really good reaction but we were just i think it was mostly a relief that that day because <laughs> yeah. we, were, we were so scared um we we're really nervous about it but um yeah it's just been fun since then to be honest yeah, that was the first time I saw it because obviously um, the lads were, you know, making it and directing it and, uh, or like um, editing it and everything, but I hadn't seen it. But um, yeah, South by Southwest, we all sat together and watched it and it was, it was cool to see it with a crowd. And also, um, <coughs> like they've been traveling around Europe and seeing it with different crowds and like different nationalities react to different jokes and different parts of it. Um, and I know I wasn't there, but when they went to Switzerland with the movie and there was like a cool genre, Swiss crowd of like movie lovers, but they all lost their minds when the cuckoo clock falls down, <laughs> like killed Bonnie. <laughs> so like different things appeal to different audiences. So it is really fun to, to sit in and, and watch it, you know. I mean, the, the, it would be horrific if, uh, if it wasn't landing, but you know, thankfully 
in groups of people, some of them definitely seem to enjoy it. Yeah, totally. And uh, the other thing that we, the one other thing about watching it in different countries was that the subtitles worked. Uh, some jokes played better with subtitles than they did in English, which was really weird. Like, so the jokes that we wrote in the script that we thought would be really funny that didn't really land properly, um, landed properly when you read them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. What, I don't know what that means about the way we made the film. But it, it means it's a very good joke for clever people. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it just means we're really literate, cool guys. Yeah, we're intellectually high reaching. <laughs> um, I'll I'll ask kind of the the usual question you get in these, right? So, how did the the film come about? How did the idea for Extraordinary come about? Um, I think. The, we, we started writing it in about 2014 and uh, we were kind of like trying to figure out a movie that we wanted to make that we thought we could that we could something that we could make ourselves you know no no matter what if we had to make it for you know, one we would um, and we started right we were just kind of looking for an idea that we thought would be kind of small enough to do um, and then I just saw this like online um, article like a clickbait type article um, and it's it was about a ghost that was coming to grope old folks in an old folks home in the UK and so we so we went and I clicked on it obviously and shared it with Enda straight away and um, in, in amongst the kind of really crappy article about the ghost there was it mentioned the people that came to solve the haunting and it was like a local couple and it said that there's only like three lines about them and it said that he kind of took the ghost inside him and then she would counsel the ghost it was a husband and wife team and it said that like during the day they, she would work in a bank and he was worked as a truck driver or something like that and um at night they would go out and do these hauntings so we just kind of went uh that's a great idea for uh like a romantic comedy how do these two people find each other and how do they get together and how do they work out they had these supernatural gifts together and that complemented each other and sort of our brains started clicking into like, this could be a great idea for kind of a cool on-screen couple. Um, and then pretty soon after that, we we just called Maeve and told her that she was going to be in this thing that we hadn't written yet um, and met her about it. Um, and it kind of went from there, really. I think once Maeve kind of uh, was on board as well in her, you know, she said she was on board. We weren't sure if she was or not, but... Um, once she kind of agreed to it, at least the, we had a voice. The things we I had made them do. Oh, <laughs> oh boy, you don't want to know. We, we had a voice for her anyway. We had a voice for Rose then, so it just felt easier to write for us and it felt kind of more realistic. So it, it's, um, I actually kind of had another question about how quickly Maeve got involved. So I, Maeve, you have such a unique comic voice. How did you kind of, fold that in or did Mike and Enda just kind of have an idea and you just kind of filled it in with with the rest yeah no totally they um I suppose like I've been doing comedy for a long time in in Dublin where we all used to live now we've all moved except for all Enda all stick in the mud Enda um loser <laughs> um so we were friends and uh I suppose they, um, we had done like little bits and pieces together before, but of course I was thrilled when they said, oh, we want you to be in a film and like be the main person in it because I had never done a film and it remains to this day and very much likely for the rest of my life, the only <laughs> film I'm ever going to be in. I was like totally, and I really respected their taste and I think they know what's funny and good. So it was never like, a question for me at all. And Similarly, I wasn't really worried if it would turn out well or not, because I think, you know, anybody who's, you know, creative or makes stuff, as you know, Matt, like, you would have a lot of, like, self or, you know, like, doubt or, oh, can't do this kind of, but, like, when it's somebody else that you know that you share taste, that you're like, oh, yeah, that's safe, fair pants, so, like, whatever you need me to do, I'll do. And then I think another thing that was useful, you know, for us um, and, like, to make a film in the first place was, they made a little teaser, like a little two minute video um, to show like basically to show like what's in their heads to put that onto something that they could share and then raise money with that. Um, so uh, I think I was like living in London or something or in New York 
when, but I came back and did that teaser just for a few, you know, it was like a day shoot or something. And that was a really helpful part of the process too, I think. Um, and then they had the script and re they were rewriting it. And like, like they said, it does take a really long time. It did take a few years and it was, um, you know, it was kind of amazing to me that it actually came to be at all. Um, so it was like fun. It was, it, it was like a lot of fun for me. So because it took so long, what was that kind of evolution from the initial thought to the final product? Were there a lot of changes or rewrites or? For, for us, there was, yeah, I think we, like the script evolved. It, we, we got together with uh, our brilliant producers, Blinder in Dublin and um, Katie and Yvonne, who you know, we were working quite closely with um, in Blinder were out looking for money and helping us develop the script. So we went through a number of changes um, in those couple of years. And, you know, we were kind of honing the script while we were trying to get the money. And as as um, Maeve was saying, it was like maybe we kind of wrote it in 2014 and we were showing it to people from, the, from you know, when, once we were happy with it, the script, we showed it to people. But it wasn't really until we showed people the proof of concept with the script that they kind of got the the weird humor of it and the kind of deadpanness, like I guess, of the of it, or uh, how seriously we wanted to take the stupidity, um, and you know, because it could it could read quite wacky if you if you just read it, you know, without any kind of reference. So I think that really helped. Um, you know, we always were quite sure the way we wanted to do it, and I think Maeve knew the way we wanted to do it. But you know, when you read something cold like that, sometimes it can be it can read different ways. Mm. So that really helped, and it even helped like um, when we made it, when we got the script to Will Forte, um, we sent that teaser little short film with it as well, and like that was the thing that, you know, before he read the script, he looked at that, and then he thought that was funny, so he read the script. So it really definitely helped um, in in many ways along the way. Um, it is. It <laughs> On paper, I could imagine where it would be very kind of, was yeah. all it, was was Mike talking for so long there? You kind of were getting lulled into kind of a. <laughs> that's what happens uh, when Mike talks. Yeah, was that obvious? Bird, birds fall out of the trees and <laughs> over and everything. He's a very relaxing guy. I've, I've hypnotized a lot of um, people <laughs> over the years. That's why Mike really did the film. 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 <laughs> <laughs> he just kept he kept murmuring yeah. before I knew what I had to do for them. Next thing she was on set. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I guess the, the the question I would have, and it kind of comes off the back of, of what I heard from Mike before I dozed off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> on paper, it does seem like it would be kind of a goofy thing, but everything is very kind of grounded, and I think you know that the way it's shot, um, it's beautifully shot, by the way. Um, Thank you. <laughs> Hey, a wonderful job. I really appreciate it. <laughs> the OP. <laughs> but, and maybe there's an earnestness to it that, and absurdity to it that really kind of saves it from being just a goofy horror comedy. And I'm wondering how you struck that, <clears throat> um, how you kind of made it, I don't want to say elevated, because I feel like that might be, you know, I don't want to put it. true. Words. Might but it be too true, Matt? Very, very true. I don't want to get too deep into my heart. So yeah, but yeah, how, how did you kind of nail that that tone? That was the harder part, because uh, I think we kind of always felt the comedy was taken care of. And we really wanted to make sure that you cared about the characters. That was really important to us that, you know, you wanted to know how these two ended up and that you were rooting for them. And um, And I suppose, it was getting that right that was the hard part for us. Getting getting the the emotional journey, I like to call it, right. <laughs> the EJ, and it was always the where's the EJ? He was screaming. <laughs> exactly. So it was just nailing. It was it was nailing the EJ was the, was the tricky thing, but um, and when that was done, well, we think it was done. That we felt it was. Uh, complete <laughs> <laughs> he said get, gotta get the ej from a to b <laughs> a to z <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, now that i know sorry man <laughs> 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 yeah, 
it's all right. It's you asked a real question there. It, it's Friday night. Let's keep it loose. Right? Oh, I'm going to eat a crisp. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> Did you bring it up for the rest of the class? That's no. <laughs> I feel like, you know, when you're in school and you're trying to eat like something under the desk that the teacher noticing. Yeah, well, go on. You can eat it on mute. <laughs> no, you can eat it if you put it on mute. No problem. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's either on mute or really close to the microphone. This could just break out as an ASMR success. So, one of the two. Um, so, now that I know like little things are just ghosts trying to interact with me, branches moving or, you know, things flying in the wind a little bit. Have you ever seen anything move and thought it was something paranormal? And it has. It didn't move. It was a flashing light. There you go. Mm -hmm. Tell them. Yeah. You're not convinced, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Where? I don't Where? know more about this Where? flashing light. I was in a hotel in Germany and there was, I was, in the room with a friend of mine and the light was kind of flashing actually it was a sconce if you like and the wall was flashing and we were just kind of noticed it sort of wasn't random and then we it was we figured out we were able to talk to it and it would flash once for yes twice for no and we spoke to it i'd say for about an hour or more actually even two hours and like got loads of information about who it was and it was a lady who used to work in the hotel called Greta Cole, who had been murdered. And she told us all of this through flashing once for yes, twice for no. Like we'd spell out the alphabet, like for her to spell her name. And it was a long time ago now, and I can't even really remember a lot of the stuff we spoke to her about. But we spoke to her in depth about her life for about two hours. And I remember she couldn't speak any English. That was one of the creepy things. She told us she couldn't speak English. Um, what else did she say? Lots of stuff. And then we, when we brought in, with there was two other friends or three other friends in other rooms, we brought them in, and it totally would stop flashing when they were there. And then they'd go, and the flashing would start again. Uh, and then it just kind of stopped after a couple of hours. But that was pretty so weird. My follow-up question is: Did you sleep there after that? I did. The other guy didn't. He was too scared. <laughs> I would have been too. I would have been out of there immediately. Yeah, yeah but it, she there. she felt benevolent. You know, she wasn't. Uh, she wasn't. She wasn't going to kill me. But she may have just turned the light on and kept me awake. That would have been the worst. Very, very extraordinary type of haunting. Yes. Yeah. It was unthreatening. Yeah. But but also her name is Cole, which like was the Chancellor Helmut Cole at the time. Like, do you think it was? Do you remember him? He, he put Cole holes in his story, man. No, uh, I, I don't. Holes. I'm just saying, like. It no, I think she had, like, as far as I remember, she had died in the in the 80s. And this was in the noughties. <laughs> but I'm sure he was alive in the 80s too, right? He's dead now, though, isn't he? He is dead now, yeah. But he was, like, I think in power in the 90s, so. Right. Don't know. What they were saying was, been... was it a dream, and a... But hang on, is Cole maybe the Smith of Germany? <laughs> yeah, I'd say it's pretty pop common. Yeah, I'd say so. Do we have any German viewers? Oh, everyone's left the line. <laughs> there, there they go. There they go. Um, a couple of things from the and Facebook. Oh, oh my God. Whoa. You creeped me out. She's here. She said no, Enda. <laughs> <laughs> is, is it you, Greta? No. <laughs> Greta's gone. It'll take too long to tell us who it is. <laughs> We've got a, a few questions that have come in from Facebook now. Um, uh -oh. So the first is uh, from Thomas in Patchog, New York. Uh, he says, great movie, cheers. He watched it virtually with the Plaza Cinema. Um, and his question is, was Christian Winter's wife inspired by any exes? <laughs> <laughs> no, she wasn't. No. Uh, I think she's just uh, a really horrible character. <laughs> she's inspired by the real Claudia. She wasn't part of the real Claudia. She's a, a, an evil version of Claudia Doherty. She is absolutely fantastic, too. She's a blast in the movie. <laughs> she was, yeah. She was always going to be Claudia from the start as well, where her name is obviously Claudia in the film. So. <clears throat> it obviously was based on Claudia. Uh, it's more of a, a statement than a question. Uh, it's from Kristen, and she says, Thanks to May's performance, Rose is the most relatable horror protagonist. 
Horror no protagonist. Way. That's so cool. Oh, horror protagonist. <laughs> Sorry, it's my, my terrible Midwestern New York accent. Um, horror protagonist. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. That's so nice. Uh, and last question from Facebook right now, it's from Kara, and she asks, what is your favorite topping to kind of pimp out a frozen pizza? Um, I usually buy like some salami or something like that. Yeah, pepperoni. For me, banana. Love banana pizza. <laughs> <laughs> really? You know, I wonder if Kara yeah. knows that her name means friend in Irish. Oh. Kara, Maeve has a question for you. Did you have? Please let us know. <laughs> yeah, your name means friend in Irish. So sweet. <laughs> let me see. There. And face, face in Spanish. Does it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what Facebook comes from, doesn't it? Yeah. Friend. Was it oh, Carl Libre? Would that somebody, be? Yeah, when you friend somebody on Facebook. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're really getting to the bottom of some of the <laughs> here tonight. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, we are hitting on some deep mysteries here. Yeah. Um, so I, I've seen the movie about three times now. Um, and every time I watch it, I kind of pick up on some little in jokes. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking either that or I'm just hallucinating. It's one of the two. Uh, but. <laughs> Last night I was watching it and the MacGuffin label on the ectoplasm jar killed oh, yeah. um, <laughs> You're, so You might be else? the first person to see that. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, maybe, maybe doesn't know what we're talking about. <laughs> chicken. No, on the, chicken. Um, on the marmalade jar that Barry pukes into, the, the name of the brand of marmalade is MacGuffins. Oh. And a MacGuffin, you know what a MacGuffin is? Yeah, is it like an in joke? Uh, McGovern is really. in film is repeated. It's no, sort it's of like a, huh? a false, a false something. You explain, Matt. You know what it is. So it's kind of like Hitchcock used them a lot as like a red herring, something that moves the plot along, but really isn't really isn't the, important. The, the good example is the, the suitcase. Important. The suitcase in uh, Pulp Fiction is a good example where it, it's they're the all classic McGovern. full of like oh, something like, with yeah. the light in it, but it doesn't really matter if they get it or not. Yeah. Or the falcon in the Maltese falcon. And oh. the ectoplasm in Extraordinary is a MacGuffin because they don't really need it. They don't the actually end. need it in the end. Yes, they do. No, they, they don't. don't. They don't actually use it. Oh, yeah. So the plot... <laughs> the thread the whole such film a, after such an amazing movie, Maeve, huh? <laughs> I, no. I have been meaning to watch this movie. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you've seen it three times, Matt. I think you've seen it more than Maeve. <laughs> you may enjoy it. Uh, <laughs> uh, was there anything else you kind of snuck in there for us to find? Um, there's loads, I'd say. Yeah. Um, but we can't remember any right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So if you see anything else, any little little uh, jokes that you see, you can reach out to uh, Mike and Emma. Oh, there's, <laughs> there's the phone number of, <laughs> yeah. of the driving. <laughs> you tell them that one, Mike. Why can't you tell? Yeah, yeah. There's one, one number on um, yeah. on Maeve's driving school car and um, on her business card is boobless upside down. You know the classic calculator <laughs> joke? On a, like when you do it on a calculator and it says boobless. <laughs> um, what else is there? All, all the names on the, um, when Martin is correcting the paper, or the, the results for his... Um, for his tests when he's kind of doing the toast rack thing. I think all the names are funny. Can't remember, there's some funny names in there. Um, the pizza, like the, the the brand called Smiley Chicken is across, it's the same brand across the whole film. You've probably noticed that though. I'm really gonna think. ask that question too. <laughs> it's like the red yeah. apple of the movie, yeah. Somebody on Twitter asked me that, but I didn't know what to tell them, so I blocked and reported them. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> what did you want to know about it matt oh uh, no i just I, I noticed it and i thought it was neat that was basically it please don't block me Maeve. um <laughs> <laughs> we're hoping to bring out a, we're hoping it's going to be like the bubba gump of um of uh, <laughs> in, 
and not films that we're gonna like bring out all these products over the next couple of years and just have a huge chain of disgusting chicken restaurants as well. <laughs> I look forward to the uh, the giant uh, smiling chicken comfort food shack in the middle yeah. of Times Square serving. You know, Actually, there's no, there's no chicken in any of their products. Is the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> so that is pretty. Well. Lasagna and the pizza and some orange. Orange juice. <laughs> Uh, another question from Facebook here. This one is from Carl. Uh, he said he's tuning in from Brooklyn. Uh, wanted to ask about the final moment. It, it's super memorable. How did you decide to end it that way? Um, the final, final moment where where um, Maeve says no. Sorry for spoilers if you haven't seen the movie. Um, if you haven't seen the movie and you're watching this, you're weird. There was no other. <laughs> there was no other way. Um, to end it in a way in that we just thought that like I guess we we're trying to subvert the usual uh, end of a rom-com where they get together but also when you just think about it there's no way <laughs> that Rose would say yes at that point in our heads so it just, it just felt like the obvious thing to happen and in some ways we kind of wrote it as a joke quickly first and it just stayed there the whole time until the end you know to every draft we were like oh we must fix that sometime and see think of a better ending and then we're like that is a good ending <laughs> after a while um so it just it was just it, it was funny to us the very first in the very first draft and it just stayed funny till we made the movie i guess didn't we have a really weird ending once where they went bowling Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, we, i think we tried <laughs> i think we tried to wrap it up a few times different ways yeah and even where they, on, where they all went yeah, and then bowling goes, together lo- and there's a goat in the bowling alley or something at the end. Yeah, something like that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, well, I know that when we were shooting that, like, at the scene at the very end, didn't we do it once, but then we forgot, like, oh, at this point, Martin Martin would be missing his finger. Yeah. So then yeah, what happened? Right. Did we have to do it again? We had to reshoot a close-up. They had to fix we it. We had to post. reshoot a close-up as well of him with the ring. With the yeah, but didn't they in the wider ones that they they painted the top of his finger out? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So basically, at that point, we shot in the order we shot Matt. We had we shot that proposal very early in the shoot, and then we realized that the, <laughs> at the end, continuity wise, that he had no finger. So we had to go back. No, we actually that. chopped his finger off, but we shot that before we chopped his finger off. Yes. Poor Barry. Yeah. Poor Barry. Barry. I didn't it's even know it was a joke. Just this is just the movies you just have to roll with it and <laughs> it's when this happens all the time i'm really used to this stuff you just it's actually not shot in order which is something that i learned you know so really i knew what was going to happen at the end because we taped that part quite early on there was a, there was a few people that asked us to shoot the to shoot yes and no matt um yeah just, just to be sure. And in some ways, me and Ender were like, well, maybe we should in case it is terrible ending. But we just kind of stuck to our guns and didn't do it in the end um, because we knew that there'd be somewhere along the line we'd have to show the edit where, where Rose said yes and then some people <coughs> might like it and we might be allowed to keep it. So we are just like, let's just not have it easier. <laughs> Absolutely. It's happened a thousand times where you make the thing that you know you want and then the one you think everybody else wants and then they go, oh yeah, that's what I want. Oh no. But yeah. the, the producers didn't realize they were dealing with a couple of militant feminists here. <laughs> <laughs> Real blue stocking revolutionaries. <laughs> wouldn't be told otherwise. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, another question from, from Facebook here. I'm sorry, the segues are terrible. Um, <laughs> <It's fine. laughs> Thanks for the question, Carol in Brooklyn, and sending loads of love to Brooklyn. That's how we say it in Brooklyn. We said Brooklyn. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Brooklyn is in the house, yeah. Um, so Anna asks, um, "What is your what was your favorite scene to shoot?" It's going first. I can tell uh, you mine just quickly, and then you can say. But I okay. really liked the scene in the car with Will, when I was in the car with Will Forte because a he had more lines to remember, so that was more relaxing. B, he was so funny and good. And it was just like, I could kind of watch him acting, which was really fun. So that, I think that was one of my favorite scenes. Um, just because in the rest of the scenes, I had a lot of lines to remember, which was, I was like, oh. <laughs> you know? So yeah, that was my favorite in the car with Will. Good answer. 
I would have I would have picked that too because it was sort of in a way fun for us to shoot too because it was quite one of the more simpler setups and just watching Will and Maeve um, do their thing and I think it was the first time you were in a scene together maybe as well so yeah. it, was just, it was just really good fun to shoot but I think the I don't know I'm gonna pick the car the slow car chase um, oh, yeah. because it was crazy to film and uh, we we did it we did it towards the end of the shoot and it was in the middle of the night over two nights, and, um, you know for such a simple kind of joke on paper it was just really really complicated, um, and if you remember in the film the virgin is being towed along or is, is floating along and then there's two cars following her, um, so to do it we we wanted to do it in camera as much as possible with it, like any kind of green screens or anything like that so we built a rig that the Virgin was on, which was like a, a kind of like a bicycle seat with wheels uh, underneath. And then that was being towed by a big truck. And then behind that was the cars were being towed because um, Maeve was driving one car and Claudia was driving the other car and neither of those two can drive. So, um, <laughs> so we had to have a, we had to have a rig to pull all the cars basically because legally they weren't allowed to drive along the road. So it just made everything a lot more complicated and fun for me and Enda. Um, so just to do a really tiny shot, shot that lasted like maybe five seconds in the movie, <laughs> took two nights, thanks to Maeve. <laughs> <coughs> That's not true, it's true. <laughs> but it turned out, I, as everybody said in the end, it turned out a lot better it because did, yeah. you were on a tow truck. Yeah, it was, it was a lot better. <laughs> Everyone uh, and Martin Scorsese texted to say, you know what? That was the best thing you could have done. <laughs> Martin. <laughs> Martin's lips to God's ears. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, Maeve, are you driving now? Have you learned? No, still, um, still one of those old holdouts. Maeve, the good thing at the moment is you're not allowed to do your, light, do your test or anything during the lockdown yeah if oh yeah if it wasn't for this pandemic i'd be yeah. i'd be a long distance truck driver by now <laughs> <laughs> it's That's affecting us all in different ways yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'd watch a movie with you as a long distance truck driver <laughs> so me too <laughs> wouldn't can, can we re remake Smokey and the Bandit and just yeah or it could be like Jewel but you just never see Maeve she's just in the truck behind all the time <laughs> <laughs> Maeve's mostly voice over a CB this would be great yeah, <laughs> yeah that'd be amazing <laughs> oh, extraordinary too the truck edition <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> I would like that too, and I'd always just be like picking up male prostitutes on the road. <laughs> yeah, we them. could get all we could get all that sweet Fast and Furious money, man. <laughs> <laughs> so many different directions you could do the Fast and the Furious. You can do the gritty Paul Schrader version, man. Let's let's make this happen. What are we doing after? <laughs> We're shooting it. We're shooting it in uh, in uh, Manchester for sure. <laughs> <laughs> we shoot it on our phones, guys, in in isolation. Yeah. Yeah, That's perfect. Did the rest in post. <laughs> she just Maeve just needs to make the back behind her look like a truck, and it's grand. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> Over. <laughs> <laughs> you had me believe it. You rubber, 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 rub, rub, go rubber ducky or whatever your name is. What's your what's your CB, what's your CB name? The Pork Chop Express. <laughs> 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 That's the one in big trouble in a little China. Is it really? He just wants his truck back. Mm -hmm. truck. I didn't know that. There you go. Where well, to watch? Very well, good. I, I will watch it. Yeah. What's it called? Little House in the Prairie? Yeah, that's it too. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, thank you so much for having us. Yeah. Thanks for being here. It's been great. Yeah. No, it was so nice. And Thanks for having us at the festival back mate, in November. Mate, that sounds like you're wrapping it up. <laughs> instead, instead I think of it. <laughs> well, it's been great. If you guys need to go, <laughs> <laughs> me and Ed are going to stay all night. 
<laughs> if you want to do one last question. Yeah, if you don't mind. Um, and, and then I'll let you get on to your night because uh, I know there's not much left of it at this point. Um, that, that we have a question from Megan um, and it's about one of the practical effects. Um, <clears throat> she's a big fan of, of goo in movies. Um, take that how you will. Um, she wanted to know what the ectoplasm was made of, if you happen to know. We do. Mm. It was made of, we did a, a couple of rehearsal days with Barry and uh, Barry Ward, who played Martin Martin, and he, the makeup lady, Corinne, made up a bunch of different ectoplasms. I think they're made of gelatin and like corn flour and water, and uh, she made different colours and consistencies, but we picked that one. And uh, Barry didn't mind. <laughs> he just he just drank and puked whatever we gave him. He was great, and he um, I think Corinne actually went on the colder night shoot, put a little dash of whiskey into the ectoplasm. <laughs> <laughs> and Barry definitely liked that. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. There, there's your Friday night cocktail. If anybody wants to make it at home, yeah. Uh, See, <laughs> at, at the at the Irish um, premiere, we had our Irish premiere in Galway. They they had ectoplasm shots for everyone. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I think was there any icing sugar? You know, like confectioner's sugar. Yeah. That Maybe, yeah. Too. yeah. Yeah. There you go. But I really liked how in so much of the movie there was lots of um, like I think where they could the lads made it real. So there was things like when the kitchen is getting kind of haunted and all the dishwasher is slamming open and all the lights are going on and off and the picture frames are spinning. That was the art department was like lying on the ground with strings on their fingers, like pulling and um, twisting things and spinning things. So it was really cool to be there in those scenes when all that stuff was happening. And I think that helped the film too, because it does look like it's really happening. It's not, it doesn't just look like, oh, they're in the kind of a cartoon. So I think there's big props to the props. art department and the props. <laughs> <laughs> Props to the props. <laughs> yeah. So, thank you once again, Enda, Mike, Maeve. Thank you for coming and, and spending the, the Thanks, time. Thanks, Matt, for having us. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, for having us. Being here. Thanks for everybody for watching. Thank you. Yeah. If you haven't seen Thanks it already, check it out. It, it's streaming yeah, through Kino Marquee. It's extraordinary. KinoMarquee.com for your local theater. And uh, have a great night. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thank you so much, Matt. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.